Good morning guys, welcome back to Barham Engines. Now first of all, I'm sorry I sound a little bit husky today. It was my stag do on Saturday. A little bit worse for wear today, a little bit tender. But anyway, uh, so first things first this morning, um, I've had all the gaskets for the, the big BMW, the 435. Um, but included in the headset that BMW supplied, of course, wasn't the valve stem seals. So I've just had to ring them up and order those. Um, but we did have on Friday our special tool. So I'll just take it out in the workshop and show you what this special tool is for. Right, so here's the BMW guys. Now this is the special tool that we have here. Right old contraption that looks. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest. It's come with no instructions or destructions as they say, but I'm sure I'll be able to work it out. But the idea of this is we have these springs over here, which I don't know whether any of you have seen. And what they do is they push, you've got two different types of rocker on this or roller, and those ones there push into the, the camshaft. And what you do, these springs, push on the back of the rocker and push them into the cam, but they do bolt onto, where are we? They bolt onto the top of this rail here, um, so they sort of sit back in that position, and I'm assuming that this special tool bends the top over so you can do the six mil bolt up, because <laughs> we've done it before. Now, as I said, I said on the four cylinders, we don't have that much trouble. We can sort of keep it all bolted up and we can bend the prongs back and behind the rockers. But on this six, it's just in the room to do that. And it's a slightly different setup. So I expect that sort of just holds it in position, bends the top down, and then you can do this, this torque six mil up into the top of there. Saves trying to rip the threads out because you'd never bend that any other way. So I'm going to have a little, um, a little look into how to set this up and um, looks pretty interesting and I'll let you know what I let you know what I come up with so I'm just in the process of boring the red top Vauxhall here as you can see it's 20 thou all of the pistons I think the pistons are the only thing that we're waiting for now and then this thing will be once I've bored it and faced the top of the block we can get it all cleaned up he wants it the usual Barham engines black and silver whole engine so um, yeah, we should get this one hopefully cleaned up maybe later on today. Um, once the pistons arrive, we can get it all together because the cylinder head is all done. So we've got the cylinder head all pretty much done. Just got to clean a bit of gasket off here, clean it up and Paul's just get Paul to do his usual magic, painting it silver. Um, there's a couple of little mods that we've got to do. We've got to get this pipe, which is at the back of the cylinder head. And you just, as you can see, it's all a bit corroded. So we're going to get that one out. Um, and he said there's a, there's a sort of aftermarket kit that you can buy, which he's going to send us, which is a, a new pipe goes in here. Um, on the block, which is in the back of the water pump housing, there's another pipe there, which renowned, is renowned for corroding. So we can punch that out from inside here. There's a new one goes in the back of there. And there is another pipe somewhere, but I can't remember where he said now. So, um, so yeah, cracking on with that one, guys. Right guys, the MGB down here, we're still waiting for pistons on that and then we can crack on with that. But we've got the, the MGB V8 engine here. You can see we're pretty much getting there now where um, we've got all the bits. As I say, the only thing we were going to do is showed you in a last video or two about the rope seal on the front that we've got to get in there. That's a bit of a nuisance on these early ones. But you'd be glad to know, and we're even more glad, that John has found a modified seal so in the back of this cover no no Paul's got some bolts in there in the back of this cover here what what happened is you've got a like a steel insert and there's a groove in between the the casing and the steel insert and you put the rope seal in there and the front pulley goes on and runs inside the rope same as it would the seal really but they're an ass to get in there they're an ass to get right and they we don't like them it's a bit of a you know it's a bit of hit and miss they can leak um, so what they do is a, a modified seal 
Now what it is really, it's, it's just like a conventional seal, except the outer is the same diameter as the steel insert that goes in the housing. So what we do is we punch that out and this goes directly into the housing and it's the correct inside. So we're then running a conventional seal as opposed to the rope. So we're absolutely over the moon with that. Um, so that is all we've got to do really on the front cover. You've seen in the last episode, Paul fitting the high flow pump um, down here. He's got all the clearances right. So that's, that's what that was all about. So yeah, pretty much there with this one, guys, actually. Paul's just finishing the, the pre-cross flow as he's got the, crank, the camshaft now. So I'm gonna get him to explain a little bit on that, what he's gotta do, what he's got left to do. And um, so yeah, we should have some clean benches in a moment. The jag, all the heads done, so we can sort of assemble that in a minute when we've got time. Start getting some of the stock motors over there, put in their places and, and stripped down, really. So the thumbnail and title on the last video, guys, um, read through a lot of the comments and you all seem to say the same thing on that one, really. That was regarding the, the comment that I had off some chap saying that it'd be fairly smartish to take me to court if I test drove his vehicle. Uh, and this was regarding the Golf that we've still got. Most of you said on there the same thing, really. Um, ignore the guy. They'd be pretty disappointed if we did that much of sort of extensive work and didn't test drive the car. So, um, yeah, as long as our insurance is covered and everything like that, then really, I think people expect the car to be test driven. There's a lot, quite a lot of mechanics on there that um, people that own garages commenting, saying, <laughs> you know, if we do work to that extent or, or even half that extent, they, they send the car home with the lads, you know, for the weekend, make sure everything's absolutely fine. One thing you do not is it going back to the customer and having any issues due to you not test driving it. So, um, yeah, all good news. Thanks a lot for the comments, guys. Here's Paul. Hello, mate. How's it going? Not too bad, mate. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good. So what we got on here? Uh, right, so the V8, we got the rocket covers painted on Friday. Yes. Thursday, Friday. So they're all dried up nicely. They look pretty good. Look very nice. Just sort of been putting some of these fixings on. Uh, put new bolts in them. Yeah. Water pumps turned up for this engine now. Water pumps turned up. So, um, there we go. It's a big old pulley on the front of there, isn't it? Fair side pulley, so I'm just getting a few bolts sorted for that. Yeah. Um, just line, just make sure I've got all the right bolts, so when we go to bolt it on properly, if we can do it quickly. Yeah, seem, that's it, yeah. Seem, seem to go off. So that's really all we've got to do on this, apart from the sump and that, isn't it? And there's sump, there's no reason why the sump can't go on. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much done. And we've got, oh, I've got to put the seal in, but instead of using the rope seal, John's found a a different type of seal. Yeah, I did tell him about that earlier. So we've got to knock the housing out there, and that fits in the um, front Make cover. life a lot easier, doesn't it? Really? So it's much nicer. Ideal, so we can get that one finished this week, hopefully. Yep. Make a bit of room. So what about this one? Uh, Is this something uh, yeah, so much the, there? The cross flow, uh, the camshaft has turned up for it, for Newman. Yeah. But we haven't got a um, sort of locating down it. So John's just going to turn something up um, so we can fit the sprocket in. Oh, I see. But obviously, just a dowel. that's a different size. So I think that's more of a metric size. Oh, and okay. That's a UNF sort of size. So we're going to have to do so something. need a bit of a two-step dowel, do we? Yeah, but once it's done that, we can time it up, put the covers on, and that one should be sort of ready to go as well, really. So Ideal, mate. They should be both done at the same time. Well done. Right guys, so it's thumbnail and title time. We've got a set of rods here. These are, I'm not gonna mention the manufacturer, but they're a really expensive set of rods. The customer has sent these in to be balanced. And what we always do is to check the housings. Um, I always, as I said to you before, on our engine builds, we always check the, the housing diameters, make sure that they're all within tolerance. Same with the crank journals, um, so people harp on about bearings and different uh, materials of bearings and what bearings that people prefer to use but to be honest with you all the material and all that is is besides the point if you're not going to get the the housing and the journal diameters within tolerance and what you depending on whether it's a competition engine and what you're going to be revving it to it's all very important so the first thing we do is always measure these housings in the book the housing size for these are what was it 2.114 so 
I've set our bore gauge here, the trusty bore gauge. I always set it to bottom limit. So on this, on these housings here, you've got it's 2.114 to 2.1145. So there's half a thou difference, and I've set this bore gauge to bottom limit. So what we'll do, we'll set it up in the in the vise just to measure it. Nipped it in here very very lightly, just enough to hold it while I'm holding the camera in one hand. So what we do first, we measure it top and bottom. And what we get in there is you can see half a thou over would be this on the slack side, so that's the top limit. Bottom limit is the zero, and here we're getting probably four tenths tight on there. And if I do it side to side, you've got almost half a thou tight there. So I've measured all the other three and they're all the same. So all these rods, you've got one, one that's probably worse than the others and, the, and one that is slightly better than the other two. So, but they're all over. Um, so that there is not good enough. These are gonna have to be honed out. Um, I always do them to, depending on what the crank journal is, I'll do them if, it's, if the crank's on top limit, these will be on the slacker side. Um, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is a prime example why we don't take anything for granted. Um, these are going to be no good. If you've got a crank that is on the tight side, and um, these being half a thou under, you're going to end up with about a thou maybe under that of bearing clearance. And that, if it's a competition engine, these are just not, that's just not good enough. So, yeah perfect example guys why you should measure every single tolerance within the engine don't just do it on visible if it looks all right some people will look at that they'll feel the joints and think oh no it's all good that is and obviously it's been running before but as i say if you're going to be run running this in a competition engine that's not going to be any good at all so there we go guys don't take anything for granted it's definitely the lesson of today well thanks ever so much for watching um until another episode like subscribe and we'll see you then take care guys